Howdy, AP Pre-Cal. It's Miss Kosh. We, um, I'm jumping into topic 3.7, which I think is going to be where um, our free response question number three comes from. Or so, or the the ideas in 3.7 I'm putting together with free response type number three. Um, so that's kind of how how we're doing it. So we'll do. I think I already have a video for this one. Um, I'll, if not, I'll come back and make a, a separate video. But the way that I'm teaching this is I'm talking through the free response number three, and then we're gonna talk about um, kind of modeling data, um, part of it without a calculator. Um, so they'll give us either a table of values or they'll tell us certain things and um, ask specific questions. Or based on this information, you know, based on whatever they tell us, um, I haven't worked these problems yet, but we're going to. But part will be without a calculator. Um, and then this kind of ties into um, the idea of harmonic motion. So then I will give you I will give you practice that matches the free response number three. I'll give you practice that matches this harmonic motion idea. And then there's part with the calculator. Um, so what I think, so then I've got a couple of calculator problems, you can't see that, um, in the notes. And so, um, that I call trig regression. So the stuff with the calculator is either, either they give you a really gross equation and it's kind of hard to do it by hand, um, and that's why they give you a calculator, or it's um, the data doesn't perfectly match a trig function, and so we'll do a trig regression and kind of allow the calculator to, to smooth out the data, sort of. Um, good enough for government work. Um, okay, so we'll see how far I get. That's kind of the overview for 3.7. Pretty sure I already have a video on this. If not, I'll go find it, I'll make one. Um, and now let's jump in here. So I have not worked these problems. I got them from other people, so thank you to the other people. Um, okay, the function f oscillates between values of negative one and seven. The table gives values of the function for selected values of x. Without technology, um, write a sinusoidal function to model the data. So we're at negative one, and then we go, um, so it, may, it might be helpful to say, okay, at zero, we're at negative one. At pi, we're at well, three. And then at two pi, so then three pi, four pi, five pi. Okay, so that's nicely spaced out, which is good. So this is negative one, this is three, and now we need, that gap is also gonna get us to, so here's seven. I did not give myself space. But if you notice, two pi was seven, three pi, we're back to three, four pi, we're back to negative one, five pi, we're back to three. Okay, so this appears to look something like this. They wanted it to be sinusoidal. They want us to write um, a sine function. My kids should be good at this. This was, um, so this one period was four pi. Um, so two pi over b is gonna equal four pi. So that means b is equal to one half. Um, yeah, because you multiply it by b, then divide by four pi, and that reduces. Um, then we have, so we've got a few choices. Our amplitude, well, our amplitude is four. So the absolute value of a is going to equal four. Um, and then we may have a shift, and then we have our midline here happens at three. So this, our d value, our midline is y equals three, so our d is going to equal three. That's pushed us up three units. Um, so write, it just says write a sinusoidal function. I assume that also includes cosine. I could be wrong. Okay, but one option would be f of x is equal to, I could say, a negative four um, cosine of one half x plus, our midline is three. That would be one version of it because cosine is starting here at the bottom. Another version might be um, f of x is equal to a positive four sine. If I start here, doo -doo 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 -doo, that looks like a lovely sine curve. Um, this was the pi, value pi. Um, it's got the one half for b still, but now I have to move to the right pi, so I put minus pi plus three. There's another version of that equation. They just said write a sinusoidal. I've given them two. You're welcome. Okay, the sinusoidal function is defined by this. The function contains the input-output pairs of, that, of, of eight pi at 18 and 40 pi at 18, which represents consecutive maximum values. Okay, so what are they telling us? That somewhere here, at, we have... This is the point 18, excuse me, 8 pi 18, and this is the point 40 pi 18, um, and they're consecutive, so it's doing, it, I don't know what it's doing exactly, but it, this is a max, and then who knows what it does, and then this is another max. So the period here is going to be the distance between them, which is 32 pi. 
So 32 pi is our period. So 32 pi equals 2 pi over b. Ugh, okay. b is equal to 1 over 16. What is the period? 1 over 16. What is the frequency? The frequency is the reciprocal. 16. Does that make sense? Um, uh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm answering totally different questions. I'm like, that doesn't make a bit of sense. Did you see that? I made a mistake, but I caught it before you could catch me on, on the, in the comment section. Um, okay, the period, 32 pi. <laughs> that's how far apart they were. Um, okay, the value of B, that's what I was answering. My bad. Okay, the um, frequency is 31 over 32 pi. And so this, um, the frequency is how much of it has it done within from 0 to 2 pi? Well, if the whole thing has a frequency or a period of 32 pi, it hasn't done much of its cycle between 0 and 2 pi. That's, so that should be a small number, and it is. Okay. That's not a thrilling question, but it's great. There we go. We're done. Um, okay, a sinusoidal function is defined by this with... Oh, there. Look at this. Here's my question from before. Sinusoidal, cosine. Super. Okay. Um, the function uh, represents the input, output of that and that, which maximum value and a minimum value... Um, I assume that they're consecutive, so 0, 42, 6, 18, so this is 0, uh, 42, somewhere here is 6, 18, don't really care about my scale. Okay, so if this is, um, I'm assuming that we're looking something like this, did they tell us? The values of A and D, find the equation of the midline. Oh, you know what? It doesn't even matter how many times we do this. If this is a max and this is a min, we could do, 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 do. We could do it all a whole bunch of times, and, um, and that would be fine. It doesn't change our A value and our D value. Okay, so the, the midline is going to be halfway through there. So the average of those, 42 plus 18 divided by 2, okay, 50, 60, 60 over 2 is 30. So y equals 30. So if you think about it, if I go from 18, I have to add 12 to get to 30. I have to add 12 more to get to 42. So my a value is um, cosine. Okay, cosine, look at this. So it's starting at the top, which is what I did here. So my a value will just be a positive um a positive 12, we said. I could see an argument for why it would be negative 12. Like, I could shift it. You could be like, well, Miss Kosh, if you shift it uh, six units or whatever, and then you could make it negative, okay, but ooh, let's not overthink it. Um, or let's make it as simple as possible. Okie dokie. So, equation, uh, oh, and D. Okay, how much did we move up? Well, we moved up the where the midline is, and so our D value is equal to 30. That's for sure. This one, it could be, it could be minus if you don't have, it's definitely positive when C equals zero. Um, so if C was zero, then this has to be a positive 12. If C is other things, it could be, um, it could be negative 12. Okay, what is the alpha value, val output <laughs> output value. There we go. Letters are, numbers and words are hard. Okay, whatever. Um, when the input value is 12, well, notice that this is 0 and this is 6, and then 12 is going to be um, this distance. So, like, if I go from max to min um, and I do that same distance again, I'm going to be back at the max. So, the output value would be 42. Okay. Um, how about we come back for another video with this harmonic motion problem?